Hey guys, so welcome back to our little series here on Soma Psyche about focusing, uh, which is a method created by Eugene Genlin that we use here a lot at Beyond Healing, and I use it a lot personally. So the last video, I gave you an introduction to what focusing is with some instructions uh, to help you understand how to do this process. Uh, now I'm actually going to do a quick demonstration uh, with my own body to show you guys what this looks like in real life. The next video, I will do um, instructions for you to use as a guide for your own focusing session, or you can offer it to a client for them to try as well. So the first step is clearing a space. And I am very conscious that I'm about to do a focusing session with a camera looking at me, which is not how I usually do it. <laughs> so immediately my body is aware of that kind of extraordinary circumstance um, as I'm kind of entering into the, the core of my body and asking to tune into the sensation there. So that is relevant um, in this moment. But other than that, I'm comfortable. I'm uh, sitting comfortably. My body feels pretty relaxed. Um, so that's that first step of just clearing a space and being conscious of what's going on in your environment. The next step is to choose what am I going to focus on? And so I've been thinking about um, something that would provide a really authentic demonstration that is happening in real time in my life right now, because that is what focusing is uh, meant for. Um, so uh, without giving a lot of detail, I have a family member that recently had a pretty major health diagnosis. And I have been meaning to call them and have yet to do so. And I have gotten very curious with myself about why it seems like I keep forgetting to do this thing that I actually really want to do and know that I need to do and that it would mean a lot to them if I did it. Um, so I'm going to focus on that today as a demonstration. And I'm going to work with my eyes closed because it does uh, make it a lot easier just to be tuned in to the sensations at the core of your body without visual distraction. So just settling in. The first thing that I am immediately conscious of around this issue that I'm focusing on is a sensation of guilt. I feel guilty for not making that phone call. I had scheduled to make it last night at eight o'clock and got distracted with my daughter. It didn't happen. First thing this morning, I woke up thinking about it, uh, feeling guilty. And when I tune into that sensation of guilt, it happens in my chest, sort of underneath my heart, kind of right in the middle of my lungs. That is what I am immediately aware of. So now I'm going to sink deeply into the core of me, holding focus on that issue. And in order to help my body tune in, I'm going to use the moment where I realized that I hadn't called last night like I promised to. So as I tune into my core, holding that focus, the sensation sinks, sinks deeper into my belly. I also feel more sensation in my chest kind of radiating out side to side. It feels like heat and like tension. The question that emerges as I'm holding focus right there is, why am I not calling? What is stopping me? That question intensifies all the sensation. It gets stronger. So now I'll see if I can find a phrase or a word I'll invite that sensation to let a phrase or a word bubble up to give meaning and articulation to what that's about. The first word that comes is sad. 
So I offer that back to that sensation and say, is that right? Do I feel sad? My body's answer to that is yes, but not just sad. So I'll sit with the sensation again and let a new word or phrase emerge. Angry, is that right? No, that's not right. Sad is closer. What I sense now is the word fear with the phrase, I don't know what to say. As I sit with that phrase, fear, and I don't know what to say, all of the sensation starts to kind of swirl in my stomach and shift and change. So I'm just tracking that, noticing that change. It intensifies mostly in my chest and it feels like it comes up my throat. And when I ask for a word or a phrase that connects with that, what comes is pressure. So I'll ask, is that right? And the answer is yes, and what's coming up is actually more of an image than a word or a phrase. And it's the it's a picture of me crying and having nothing to offer, no comfort to give. And that brings up big emotion. There's a sadness again. That feeling, the word that comes with that wave of sadness is helpless. It continues to radiate up. There's tension in my back. So I'm going to offer that idea, that phrase back to my body. I feel helpless. And that resonates as very true. I feel helpless. More emotion comes there and I could feel that I could sit with that sensation for a long time and be with the grief and helpless feeling. And what's emerging as I sit with that is this awareness that I can make that phone call and be honest about that helpless, sad feeling rather than attempting to give advice um, and own the, the pressure to have something to say, but the knowledge that there is nothing to say. And that feels uh, approachable. So that is a very personal and very real demonstration of what focusing can do and what it can be used for um, and how 
the wisdom of letting story slowly emerge by moving repeatedly through this cycle of um, sensation with a little bit of articulation, but then straight back to the body and around and around we go. Um, what emerges is a much deeper, truer story of what we're holding and how we're feeling about something. And sometimes, though not all the time, it sheds light on how we can move forward um, and like it did this time. And that does uh, give me a sensation of how I can make the phone call and do what I actually want to do in a way that feels more honoring to how I'm actually feeling. So thank you for sitting with me while I did this and I hope it was helpful to see what focusing looks like um, in real time. Thanks guys. Hey guys, so you may have noticed in the last video that there were some uh, fun little noises in the background due to the ever presence of cell phones and my forgetting to put it on airplane mode before we started. Um, I do think it's kind of interesting and I will share with you that the person that I was uh, talking about in the video was actually the one texting <laughs> while I was doing the video. Um, and I find that very fascinating. So I apologize for the distraction, but uh, the reality is, is that sometimes we're doing focusing and doing therapeutic interventions with distractions in the background. And today was no different. Um, the, the truth about focusing is that um, we can do it in the midst of all kinds of circumstances and practicing that tuning into the core of you, regardless of what's going on, is incredibly beneficial because it helps us keep track of ourselves in all kinds of environments. So a uh, little teaching moment there with the realities of uh, ubiquitous cell phone use. So I apologize for that and thanks for watching.